The Panthers Poundcast is for entertainment purposes only. The opinions expressed on the show are solely those of the presenters and in no way reflect the views of the Panthers organization. Listener discretion is advised. You got it. Let's do this shit. Introduce us. Booyah! Panthers Poundcast starts right now. I'm your host, Los Pantera, along with host number two, Jamaicus Plow, and host number three, <laughs> Master Splinter. Ow! What's up? No, <laughs> What's up with you? Number two. <laughs> <laughs> number 13 today, KB. Welcome back this year. Hooray. Seriously. Nice. How was your fellas' weeks? Oh, it was just about as splendid as can be. It was a quiet er news week, I thought, until Jamaicus came in this morning and told me he had a list full of Panther he news. He plowdozed the news off the internet. <laughs> Indeed, there has been many happenings, maybe not so great, but many happenings anyways. Mr. Dave Gettleman has said that he feels the opening Thursday night game is a disadvantage competitively for us and the Broncos due to only having a half a week of practice after final cuts. Right. Which, you know, is interesting. We have never been in that position to play the first game of the year on the Thursday. Right. I can see his point. We do have 10 days before we have to play again, so it's kind of like almost like a uh, last preseason game. Well, let's talk about just, you know, in terms of final roster, though. Like, you're finally set, and now you have three days before you have to fly to fucking Denver to right. play stupid Von Miller. And see their stupid ceremony. And stupid Mark Sanchez. Are they going to do the ceremony that day? Oh, yeah. That's, that's fucking what tacky saying. as shit. Oh, yeah. We get to go sit there. And that's why... Fuck we're the Broncos. Broncos. Yeah, that's pretty horrible. But I agree. Fuck that, Elway. That's one thing old Gettleman said this week. There's something in the air in Denver that makes me think I'm not going to mind being there. Oh, no. no we're going to beat happens. the shit out of them. I can't wait to see it. I'm, we're going to beat the shit out of them. I'm that. psyched about that. It's more Gettleman news. He was kind of ripped apart in most publications in terms of his draft class. Uh, Sports Illustrated comments that says you shouldn't grade a draft class until about three years in. But uh, Football Outsiders actually ranked us the 32nd best team in the draft. That would be dead last dead for last. you rookies. Uh, their comments, quantity does not equal quality, at least when it comes to the Panthers cornerbacks. Dave Gettleman attempted to drafting for need in trying to replace... Josh Norman, but no one was impressed with the trio of corners he came away with this year. Multiple commenters questioned the second round selection of Samford's James Bradbury. Their two harshest graders actually thought Samford. round five Samford. pick Zach Sanchez was a better pick than either of the two cornerbacks that Gettleman drafted first. The Carolina GM has generally earned favorable reviews for building a Super Bowl roster after inheriting a cap-strapped mess, but this is the second consecutive year for the Panthers having finished in the bottom five of these rankings. And let's see, if it's the second consecutive year that was last year. Yeah. And how did that turn out? I think we did um pretty good. 15 and 1, was it? I think yeah. that's what it was. Well, there, here's a quote from Gettleman himself. He, he says, A, that he doesn't listen to outside noise. He doesn't right. give a shit what any pundit or any fool with a stupid fucking tie and a pin and a, an opinion that shouldn't fucking matter has to say. But he says perfect right here. He just says, you know, I don't listen to the outside noise. I don't worry about it. I don't read. And he mentions the 2013 draft. He said, it's us getting killed in the 2013 for the draft. And then they have a redraft and four of the guys should have gone in the first round. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. We know what we need for our team to be successful, and that's the kind of players we're looking for. So, And even they say, this is the same article that Splinter was just reading. At the end, they say, given how wrong the pundits were about 2013 class, we slash I need to give old Dave the benefit of the doubt. And I agree with that. That's and a fact. Panthers they say it every year, and what more does he have to do? I mean, besides win the Super Bowl, it, it, the guy has some, this innate ability. He's a, an incredible talent scout. He knows what he's looking for. He knows what works within Ron's system. You don't think Ron's in his ear? No. More than his wife? You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, they're going to do something. And like you said, they're ranked, what, bottom five? They were ranked in in dead last this year. And we just got better. 
So, I mean, in Gettleman, I trust. Yeah. I don't know if in Gettleman, we trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. All of us. Right. All it, of us. I'm, and hopefully, I mean, hashtag. Hashtag. On every, in every possible <laughs> scenario, Gettleman has proven that we have no idea what we're talking about, and he's yeah. just smarter than everybody else. Right. That, and until that proves to be false, I'm just going to continue to trust him. Yep. So that's no news to Panthers fans that because we know what Gettleman does. So fuck off, national school. media. Yeah. That's how we feel about we hate that. you. Uh, moving on. Peanut Tillman did a charity event in Chicago, did an interview. Did I hear you tell me earlier that he might not be retiring? He says he's considering. He says rehab's going great. He does, you know. Why doesn't he just coach? Can't he just teach the peanut punch to a whole generation? It's all our team, thank God. Yeah, and honestly, I don't know that his spot's here for him if he wants to come back. Well, you said they already gave they the gave number away to his Sanchez. Number. I, I think it was either Sanchez or Bradbury that's one actually of the, the one of yeah, guys. that's wearing thirty-one. So yeah. I mean, we've already given his number away. I just don't know what he has left. I mean, with all of the injuries, why you would to, you risk it again? Exactly, and. That's a good question, is why doesn't he come back as at least like a, an assistant cornerback coach? But you'd have to imagine that if he were to do that, it would be for the Bears. He, uh, he, he did he, say he, in the same article that coming to Carolina was the like a super eye-opening experience. He mentioned that Gettleman was the coolest person in the NFL as far as an executive goes. See? He said he learned so much about camaraderie. I mean, he didn't shit on Chicago or nothing. But right. I've, you know, he, he liked it here a lot. Jared he Allen liked it here too, man. Yeah, yeah, he really did. So that's that. Good luck to you either way, Peanut. Thanks for the year. Thanks for the Peanut Punch. Um, another bunch of awards keep going on. Jerry Richardson got awarded the Class of Champions Award. Don't know what that means. Congrats, Jerry. You I'm win win shit. Jerry, You're on a great team. Oh. You're rich as fuck. You win shit. Hooray. Ron Rivera and Stephanie Rivera looking fly at the Kentucky Derby. For you people with the interwebs, you should get on there at the Instagram and the Twitter. They got a thing called Google. That I don't do. We're filming this on Saturday, to or this week. Yeah. So, uh, I guess the Kentucky Derby's today? Yeah, I don't fucking know. There's horses. I yeah. want to see a rock show later. Hell yeah. Nice. Carolina Rebellion, medals. Who's playing today? Megadeth, Lamb of God, Anthrax. Jesus and... Christ. But that's all before 8.30. Who's headlining? Stupid gay fucking five-finger fruit punch. <laughs> and five finger five finger five finger death punch five, and disturb. Five flavor fruit punch. Or whatever. Five flavor fruit punch. Yeah, fuck those bands, by the way. Anyways, yeah, they suck, so I get to leave at 8.30. Hell out yeah. The door. I feel like there was another good band, but I forget who the hell it is. But tomorrow night's Rob Zombie, Alice Cooper, Cypress Hill. Nice. That's wow, what a man. Cypress Hill. Right? Pretty throw sweet. a little Cypress Hill there. The so anyways, end. moving on. Have fun at the show, kids. Yeah. Check out Ron Rivera looking fly in his pink shirt. He goes to Kentucky Derby. He goes to see Cypress Hill. Indeed. And then how about good man Charles Johnson doing some charitable work in many communities? Anyone know what's going on with that? Uh, I know that he donated some money to a local charity earlier this week, and it had something to do with affordable housing. Nice. Uh, I think and he's doing that in Rock Hill. He's doing some affordable housing there and then also in his hometown. The the thing that I've seen is he actually owns a number of franchises. I can't remember if it's for like uh, barber shops or uh, is something, but he owns a number of businesses. He seems to be really smart in the way that he invests his money. He's got the restaurant uh, open up open here in Charlotte. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's looking really cool, made out of an old open, fire department. Open roof and shit. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Congrats, CJ, so, on that. Thank, and he also gives some money to his old school to help the athletic program. Absolutely. Man, housing good guy, man. And, and Thomas Davis went on record to say, and you can read about everything he's doing on Charlotte Observer. has a great article on every piece of charitable work he's doing and really in depth and Thomas Davis said that he feels Charles Johnson should be considered for the Walter Payton Man of the Year because what he's doing is on par with Olsen and himself in terms of charitable work so that's a big statement from a winner of the award right. who's our guy also it'd be great to have fuckers. three and four years hell yeah that'd be great and then um, what else oh yeah I just showed these guys this, this skit where you have Greg Olsen <laughs> Vernon Davis some white guy from the Jets and Tommy oh, Bo was it Tommy Bohannon? Yeah, Tommy, Tommy, Bo. is Tommy Bohannon. Anyhow, <laughs> on that stupid show Inside Amy Schumer, they have a little skit. She's not in it if you hate her like Splinter's wife does. <laughs> and, and a lot of people. You should check it out though. Go to the interwebs, type into Greg Olson, Amy Schumer skits. Very funny. They do a, a cross reference to fantasy football and they're watching us regular Joes suck at life and make fun of us. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> and the, that's speaking really of good Olsen, synopsis, actually. Yeah, that's exactly what the skit <laughs> that's was. What 
you're going to get. And it's pretty funny. They swear. They use foul language. They, you know, it's pretty awesome, like we do. And then uh, Greg Olson had a superstar caddy and Mr. Luke Keekley for the, the golf tournament. He's rehabbing that shoulder, carrying some fucking one woods around and such. <laughs> and that's it for Panther News. Our team's staying active, looking fly. Well, last week, I, I forgot to mention the Ski Smith prom thing. Oh, yeah, Steve. Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen what it, a you really should go check it out. Dude. Check out his Dream on 3 uh, foundation. Uh, he takes an autistic girl um, we're from Gastonia yeah. to yeah. her prom. And he's looking prom fly queen. Shit, dude. They made a whole video. Yeah, he, he looks fresh as shit. Yeah. Um, it looks like cool it's, it's really tough. He does look a little bit like, like a mini LL Cool the L, the head, He's got the LL head. Yeah. You'd be hard, this old school. You'd be hard pressed to find some ill will in this room for Steve Smith. No, we love yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. If you got a problem with Steve, fuck you. Yes. That's how I feel about you. All the people complaining. Fucking get him and cut him and it hurt his feelings. And that's all. For you non Panthers fans, this is what it's like to be on a team where you have good hearted people who don't kill people. Um, except for Ray Groot. And they don't beat up women. Except for Greg Hardy. Oh. oh, yeah. Um, and they don't hide in trunks. Except for who did that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they don't smack around transgenders in bathrooms. Shh. <laughs> Anyways, and no Panthers. And I didn't really read anything else about NFL news this week because I don't care that much. I just like our team. Hell yeah. So that's all. I, I heard uh, Johnny Manziel is going to be a judge on American Idol next season. You're joking, right? That's the rumor. Rumor has it. Rumor has rumor it. Rumor has it. He would really. Is that yeah. serious rumor? Or is yes. that a rumor that you just made up? <laughs> that's a, a Mike uh, rumor. That's a who's uh, Mike. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, oh. a, it's a it's a true rumor that you just made up. <laughs> yes, a totally totally true rumor. That's your job. Plow. I thought he was gonna start selling. I, you, dude, you had me scared. I was like, <laughs> really? I wouldn't believe it. That's what yeah, I said. It was like, yeah. Absolutely. What is he gonna do? He's gonna go the Tebow Tebow route because Tebow, like, he just what, he played what two years? He played two, two years, seasons, but now he's a, he's an analyst for college football on ESPN. Right. So there you go. And a preacher. Oh, and a preacher. Is he a preacher? I don't know. Rumor has it. I mean, <laughs> rumor has it. <laughs> rumor has it. <laughs> is that a true rumor or a made up rumor? He's yeah. he's a preacher at one of those. I mean, he, totally he's a preacher rumor. in life. He is. One of the new age churches that accepts everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and stuff. I use it as part of my uh, DDP yoga. I add the Tebow, and I just use dynamic resistance when I Tebow. For those of you who don't know anything about Diamond Dallas Page yoga, you should give it a whirl. It's pretty sweet. It's dope. DDP. Bang. You know who DDP is. Diamond Dallas Page, fool. Anyhow, what else you fools want to talk about? Know, we just shout out Steve Smith and DDP. We're all like celebrities now. And, and Shit. We talk about rock concerts. Yay. Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill. Well, we could talk about the Jibba Jabba, Jabba. the Jibba Jabba oh, of the shit. week. Jibba Jabba. We need a Jibba Jabba noise. What the hell, Carlos? I Jibba Jabba. Jabba. need a, yeah, Jibba Jabba. We need a fucking noise, though. Like the, you know, we need a noise, <laughs> we need a character, and we need a graphic. Just Jibba Jabba. Well, Jibba. I can make it happen, Mexican. Let's go you a Mexican podcast. Mexican? If you're listening to anybody graphic design, we need a design for the segment called Jibba Jabba. Yeah, Matt Schaefer. Yeah. <laughs> Jibba Jabba. Make Matt, make Matt do it. Well, what we're going to do for Jibba Jabba this week, since the draft was last week-ish, we are going to look at the other fucktards in our uh, division and just talk about their draft picks and general direction of... It's not that we really give a shit, because I fuck mean, that. Right. Well, and we've been the kings of the South for three seasons now. Yeah, we so don't feel threatened by any of these. Yeah. They're it's mere peasants back in our kingdom. To back. Mere peasants. To back. To be like that. They are mere peasants. Why don't you start off with the dirty... Dirty Saints. The New Orleans Aints. Um, look, what are we gonna do? Read all of them, or? Yeah. Well, you know, just it's tell us who they draft. Well, Sheldon Rankin's huge. The DT out of Louisville. I mean, he's gonna definitely. They need help on defense down there. Since the whole bounty game, they need help. Their everywhere. defense has just gone away. Plus, you got them. What's his name? Freaking fat dude. Um. Rob Ryan left New Orleans. <laughs> hey, 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 Rob, Rob Ryan, the dude, the dude <laughs> from Lebowski, but he's just chubby. <laughs> so uh, they need all the help they can get. He's a, a big dude, apparently. He is scheme diverse, productive player. Again, we know nothing about college. No, yeah. we're, 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 <laughs> he's trying to sound knowledgeable. It's I, great. I have it written here, and I still the can't dude sound that was like this is trying to sound knowledgeable. Yeah. The guard, the fat yeah, guy. you know, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. All right, <laughs> um, you dick. Oh, poor, uh, <laughs> Just read like what the right. people are saying. We, they got a wide receiver. Where are you? Well, that's what I'm trying to see, man. He's this fucking guy's blind. Here, read this. Uh, so they, uh, all, they, they drafted they second. They drafted a wide receiver from Ohio State, Michael Thomas. Yeah. And another second round pick they got from New England via Arizona. Some bullshit. They got a safety, Von Bell from Ohio State. So who's actually? Uh, he was rated pretty highly. And then you get fourth rounder. 
From Washington, they got David Onyemata, another defensive tackle. So they're trying David to shoot Onyemata. Onyemata. Something like that. On, on your on your and then on your number mother. seven round, Daniel Lasco running back California. So, whatever. They've got a pretty wide variety of positions here. I uh, think that they improved, but they're still just yeah, I'm the not play? intimidated oh, by it. They're great to B-plus from B this plus. place, which was outsiders or focus. This is pro football focus. So they give him a B-plus. They say that the, the, the defensive tackle is pretty decent. He's a top ten pickup. Um, you know... Fuck you, New Orleans. Really? That's what this article generally says to me. It's like, blah, 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 New Orleans are a bunch of fucks. So, <laughs> if you have anything to add to that, I, uh, I don't. Well, I think, why don't you look at the way uh, where they were ranked, what grade they got this year, but what did they do last year? We got ranked low, and we 15-1, and one, and they're yeah. sucking I ass. I mean, all of these rankings you. are bullshit. Hey, right. Right. So you have no shit. idea. They have Luke McCown. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to need whichever one it is. Do they still have that? Who knows? He does commercials for fucking whatever it was. <laughs> Remember? He did that commercial. Y'all didn't see the Luke McCall commercial? Oh, like, yeah, like, the Verizon like, yeah, one. Yeah, the backup the tower, yeah. Uh, one day, I'm going to... Er, I bet that backup tower would <laughs> be really great if it got its shot. That game helped us out so big last season because it was kind of like, what was like week four? And you didn't expect to play a backup quarterback, but hey, that's kind of cool. We'll take that, yeah. you know? And that it wasn't John, a gimme game. It was a close game. That Josh Norman interception was pretty badass, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. please someone be good I love the that season. season. I love last season so yeah. much. Except for we're gonna, uh, except we are for going to need some of these draft picks to hit. I think Sanchez is going to be a good player. And, and then what I also read about some you know stuff about Bradbury, yeah, good, why we good. picked him, there's some pretty cool little stats that he turns into where it says here the elite athlete category due to what Gettleman is judging him by, not what these right. assholes are judging him by. Right. Anyways. Is anybody afraid of New Orleans? No, they're the least of my I'm afraid worries. to go there and be around a bunch of drunk assholes. Uh, but not the team, no. Yeah, yeah, I'm afraid of herpes. Now, I think that... Uh, I have a... <laughs> you you want to know a funny story about New Orleans? Yeah. This is somewhat <laughs> debauched, but not terrible. <laughs> I was going to see the Panthers play the there. This is, it's not that bad. It does involve a gentleman's club, but it was a daytime, so it wasn't that bad. A daytime. <laughs> a daytime. Club, isn't I was the worst. Man. The There's part? really nothing else better than that. <laughs> so I'm gonna get out of the sun and get into a strip Listen, club. I was just checking things out. I just got there. No, I, I, was, it out. I was it's with a, friend, a professional friend who works at Blank, who I will not mention because his wife would be angry. But anyways, oh, uh, just keep going, keep going, I'm going. Anyways, and this strip performer, yes, <laughs> dancer, professional <laughs> dancer, had these gigantic additions to her. I'm going to put the real words in subtitles right here. And it wasn't a personal dance performance. It was, you know, <laughs> stage. And yeah. then she took her giant additions and slapped me in the nose with, with her them, tits. And it hurt a fucking lot. <laughs> were they fake? Yes, and it hurt were a they lot. Were they pierced? They were additions, no. sir. She, this, this, They're she, weapons. Watch. This is one of those things, like, if you had to rate a performer 1 yeah. to 10, she'd be like a 3.5. <laughs> and she smacked me in the face with these fucking rock additions, oh. <laughs> and it hurt. That happened in New Orleans. You say rock hard so titties. So fuck you. I'm being clean for the kids. <laughs> for the kids that are watching our fucking show. Anyhow, that happened in New Orleans, so don't go to that place. Uh, I'm not going to share any of my New Orleans stories, because they're all the more, way more debauched. Than that was that. the daytime. Yeah, daytime well, strip club. So fuck you, New Orleans. Yeah, so yeah. let's move on to another city. Tampa Bay. Uh, I've, yeah, I've never been to Tampa Bay. Bay. You've never been to Tampa Bay? I have. Bunch I of have. Times. It is. Uh, they actually have good gentlemen's clubs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's Green the one man. thing I remember <laughs> about uh, Tampa Bay is, as I was just driving through it, because I didn't. I think I stayed one night there, but as I was driving through it, yeah, it is just strip clubs on every corner. So really, it, no <laughs> joke. Like it's, there are strip clubs like, like I drove gas stations. Oh, it's pretty sick. They still have to four. Okay. Yeah. But Go the other thing that. about Tampa Bay is they have the shittiest traffic in Florida. It's pretty bad. It, it is just. I was sitting there for an hour. They don't and have a half. lot of roads, and there's all no. two lanes, and and there's only like one or two ways to get into the city, and it's just yeah, across a giant bridge. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just a nightmare. Across a bridge. Anytime that you have to jump between like these little islands, or it, you have to cross a bunch of bridges or fucking rivers or whatever the fuck they have down there, yeah, like boat in their stadium. Yeah, it's fucking just a pain in the ass. Miami's pretty bad too, but fucking Tampa. 
I hate it. Well, how'd they do on the draft? How did they do on the draft? Are you worried about Tampa Bay? No. Fuck no. Are you kidding me? They're the ones that worry me. They're the redheaded most. stepchildren of the NFC South. I don't think they're going to be that way this year. That, everyone said that last year. Yeah, yeah the year before that. It's always, oh, Jameis Winston's coming in. They oh, fired, like, Jerry McCoy's coming progression in. They, they fired their coach. Oh, look they, at they're, Darrell they're, Revis. There's no continuity. I'm just saying. There's no continuity. They have fired They've their got, Their receivers are just as big as ours. Jameis is just, I mean, he's not Cam Newton. Let's be honest here. Nobody's Cam Nobody's Cam Newton, right? He's a fucking freak uh, in a good way. Um, yeah, J- Jameis, I don't know what they're going to put together down there, but to me, I still think they have way more potential than the Saints that are rebuilding with a really old quarterback. The Probably the worst defense in the NFL, so there's nobody to worry about there. I think the Saints, I think the Saints are going to be better than the Bucs this year. All right, there we go. Let's but, make a bet on that. Um, Who's better, Bucks or Saints this season? Who's better, you know, <laughs> fucking ass cancer? We're in a world <laughs> Uh, would you rather have ass cancer or prostate cancer? Yeah, it's like it sucks. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna pick the better of two. I don't know. That's a tough one. But <laughs> we might as well choose your cancer. cancer. Yeah. Prostate okay. It, th- with their first pick, they picked up Vernon Hargreaves, uh, cornerback out of Florida. Uh, he's a good cornerback, but honestly, he's five eleven and KB is six five, and he doesn't scare me. I know they picked up Brent Grimes, and I forget who their other cornerback is, but he was pretty good too. Uh, I, I can't remember who the fuck it was. It doesn't really How many matter. Games did they win last year, six or something, or seven or eight? No, I can't remember. Uh, who cares? Not yeah. enough. It, fuck you. Uh, Noah Spence was picked up in the second defensive end. He's actually a really good pass rusher. So yeah, I've heard see. his name. Yeah, uh, we could see how that goes. And then in the second round, they also got a kicker. In the second round of the NFL draft, they picked up Roberto Aguayo. Hey, one of your people. Yes. <laughs> Me and uh, Zach Sanchez are going to go hang out and eat some flautas. Not with, with, the, uh, with Roberto Aguayo? Not with the enemy. Yeah, we're not. He's Tampa. Oh, yeah. Man. Come on now. We're going to go down to Swayze Waters. Hey, in the fourth round, they picked up a guy from North Carolina Central. What's that? It's a, Is that a college? It, kind of. Oh, it's, it's bigger than Samford. <laughs> yeah, what's that? That's kind of a college <laughs> where James Bradbury came from. And we're actually hosting the quarterback from Samford this week. Uh, and there's a po- Apparently, we're talking to the quarterback from Samford to be a possible backup. So we'll see how that plays out. I kind of doubt it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers got a B- minus from Pro Football Focus. There you go. I'll show you uh, Day one, they picked up Vernon Hargreaves, and that's going to improve their defense, But uh, along with the addition of Noah Spence. But I'm just not intimidated by them. They're not it, any good. It, well, here's the thing. is <laughs> On paper, you look at them, they have Vincent Jackson, they have Austin Safarian Jenkins, yeah. they have Mike Evans, Mike Evans. they, they oh, had... Man. Doug Martin, like they're a good team on paper. No, I thought they but resigned here, him. No, uh, he. Uh, wait, yeah, they did resign right. him. I'm, th- so, yeah, I'm thinking of Alfred Morris, who went to fucking uh, Dallas. Yes, but they have a good team on paper, but they just continually fucking lose. How can you expect to be afraid of a team that just constantly fucking loses? I, we have beat them six forever. times in a row. They're going twice to get with a backup better. Quarterback. Yeah, we have beat them six times in a row, twice with a backup quarterback. <laughs> Fuck Tampa. That was pretty funny, though. That was awesome. D-A. 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 <laughs> D-A. Jameis Winston's just not consistent, and he's an idiot. Wow. And he's stupid. And ugly. I think he's going to get better. And he better. steals crab legs. We'll see what happens there. All right. Who else? Uh, so Tampa Bay, are we scared? <laughs> I haven't been afraid of Tampa Bay in... I look at those... Clearly, we know how you I look at those play. games as like two wins on the schedule. <laughs> yeah. We're at least 2-14. and 14. <laughs> <laughs> At least... And, and we're going to be the everything goes home. south. We win two games. Yeah, we're going to win every home game. That's Tampa, that's, we, just, we, that's we, what championship teams do. They win at home, and I'm looking forward. We played to like shit last year against Tampa. Beat them by thirty. <laughs> so fuck them. <laughs> Anyways, moving on to the stupidest bunch of fucks in the division. Ooh. There's a good question to ask. Which team? In the NFC South, you hate the most. Let the comments fly. Yeah, comment. Yeah. Let us know which one you hate. Personally, 
I think all three of us are on the same page with the Falcons. I hate the Falcons. Yeah, yeah. me too. I despise the Falcons. They're the dirty shit stain on the underwear. They're the, the dirty world. birds. They suck. Your city sucks. Well, yeah, they're sucks. from Atlanta. Atlanta. Their uniform sucks. Their they're the team sucks. that had Roddy White. They lost. Of course, a, they're they lost suck. a pick due to cheating this year. They, they had to pipe in their the sound pick. Yeah. in order to cheat, and they still lost. God, you suck in Atlanta. <laughs> it really, it's just <laughs> fucking it's a reason we really are lost. sixteen and zero because that one fucking play we're it's calling Christmas. It's it bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Anyways, they got a stupid safety in the first round. Keanu Reeves. I mean Neil. From Florida, Whoa. blah blah. He, apparently, you know these people are saying they got a D plus. First off, their overall ranking. Yeah, it, they, people are just saying that Atlanta just had a shit draft, and I'm tending to agree with that. Neil is a big hitter. They say Cam Chancellor esque. Blah blah blah. Who cares? Number two from oh, Houston, shit. you got Deion Jones inside linebacker. They're saying this guy's slow, misses one out of every six and a half tackle attempts. He gets beat in the run game often, so get ready to get stomped all over by our power run game. We're going to shit on that guy. Uh, you got 81, third rounder. Austin Hooper, tight end. Meh. Whatever, not even going to talk about you. Fourth round. They're hoping he can replace a third rounder named Austin Hooper out of Stanford. They're hoping he can replace Tony Gonzalez. Well, they say he's a solid run blocker, and he's capable of making spectacular catches down the field. Too bad Matt Ryan's on his ass and can't throw the ball to you. When not when around. fucking Luke Keekley lights you up. Atlanta's finally got to wake up, and and if Matt Ryan has another shitty year next year, he's like, terrible. They're gonna have to just decide to let him go. Yeah. Sucks sooner or later. Fuck Same thing with Cincinnati. You Turkey can't keep motherfucker. Andy Dalton forever. They got a fourth rounder, Devondra Campbell. Devondra, nice name, Dick. De- De- <laughs> uh, all with Devontae. Maybe it's Devondre or Devondre. It's the de fucking stupid. It's Devondre, and I don't care. Devondre. I mean, I'm not ever gonna respect any of their players ever. So fuck them. And uh-huh. then you got six rounder. Blah blah, Wesh something Schweitzer. Wesh Schweitzer. Schweitzer. He's a guard from San Jose State. He's a guard. We're guards. We're guards. <laughs> We're guards. <laughs> Seventh rounder, Devin Fuller, wide receiver UCLA. So basically, the story here is you're gonna suck again. Surprise! And we're better than you, and we know it like Lobo Jim. Basically, and all we say we're saying uh, pull is solely back, eye back on your team. To back, to back. Too bad. Seriously though, I guess if you make someone pick your biggest challenge, I guess if you make me throw a dart at the fucking board, I would just pick the Bucks for one reason, just because I really feel like the Saints and Falcons are just gonna suck ass really bad. So the Bucks mm. might surprise me, but I think That's they're, a all, fair point. they're all three gonna suck ass. Yeah. When we're gonna have double digit wins, we're gonna at least be 11, 12 win team. They're gonna be fucking battling at six, seven, eight, nine. Like, is Tom Shanahan still down in Atlanta? Who knows, probably. If he is, that's great. <laughs> I know uh, Dan Quinn uh, is the coach. Yeah, offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan. Oh, is he really? He's terrible. Yeah, he is just, he's hot garbage. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Where was he at? He was at, he had, He uh, was yeah. under his dad in uh, Washington. Washington, that's right, and really screwed the pooch. <laughs> he was under his dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's good for the kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, the same thing. Like uh, Chip Kelly's gonna have to like really prove himself, or he's gonna end up like. Uh, I think that the Niners are in for one of the worst seasons. It should be of of any NFL lunch. team. Are you shitting on Blaine Gabbert? I am shitting on all over <laughs> Blaine Gabbert. He's the best. all over his face, neck, and he's chest. He's the best. Why are you all on Blaine Gabbert's dick? He's my man. <laughs> I wish he was our corner. Yeah, we had the chance to take Blaine Gabbard. We, really we, we blew it. It's close. Rumor has it. Rumor has it. <laughs> Anyways, next week we'll discuss why we are excited about the 2016 upcoming season. Yeah, what we're, why are we confident about this Why season? are we? It, we just told you that we think we're going to beat the piss out of the NFC South. And I think that we're going to beat the piss out of a lot of people. But next week, we'll talk about why. In the meantime, get some people to subscribe to our stupid channel or you're not good people. Yeah! Yeah, we're going to have a uh, subscription drive soon. Come to your house and make you get on your cell phone and subscribe we're to We're going to come to these people's houses? Yes. That's pretty crazy. He is. He's, That's the plan. I'm the coming. Enforcer. I'm bringing If the police Sanchez. are watching, it was him. All right. Have a great week. Keep, Keep pounding. pounding. Keep pounding.